People love to classify things, to group them into one category or another. And when people first started looking at the world around us, we started saying, okay, there's these things that are alive, let's group them. And they classified them into uh, what they thought made sense. There was things that can run after us and chase us, or we can chase after them. We call those animals. Things that don't run away, and we could just walk up to them and kick them and eat them, we call those plants. Well, that worked, but then there's things like fungi, which mm, after a while we started realizing aren't plants. And then there's some animals which don't run away. For example, sea anemones, if you've ever, ever been to a tide pool, they don't run away. So things started getting a little bit more complicated and people weren't sure how to do it. Then some people started realizing, hey, let's group them into similar categories and started thinking about how can we arrange these and ultimately came up with systems that started grouping organisms based on their evolutionary relationships, much like we do with people. We group people into their families and then larger families and so on and so forth. And it's just a simple way of organizing things. Now initially, like I was saying, some of those groupings, those evolutionary uh, classifications were based on relatively uh, simple characteristics. And as we've developed our understanding of how evolution has occurred on this planet, scientists are constantly re reclassifying things and even changing the entire uh, classification system. And that's where the idea about domains versus kingdoms comes in. If we take a look over here, we can see the traditional five kingdom system that we now think of as traditional, but it was actually revolutionary at its time. And with the traditional five kingdom system, there's the kingdom of the bacteria, the monera. Then there's the kingdom of protista, which is things like kelp and amoeba. The plants, which you probably recognize, the fungi, which include things like mushrooms and uh, yeast. And then our favorite, the animals, animalia. Well, scientists have started to realize that even though there's a bunch of bacteria, they really don't look very similar. There's a big division between them in ways that they work and big genetic differences between them. And so scientists have come up with this larger category called domains, where all of these kingdoms all are subsumed into a larger domain called eukarya. Why? Because all of these creatures are eukaryotic, which means they have a nucleus in their cell. These guys are prokaryotic, which was why originally they were lumped together in one kingdom. But they're now divided into domains called bacteria, or sometimes eubacteria, and archae, or the archae bacteria. Now, once you get that, how do you understand the classification past the domain system? Well, let me show you what it is over here. So the typical or standard hierarchy is to group things, one of the largest categories, like I said, is kingdom. Within each kingdom, there's many phyla. An individual one is called a phylum. Within the phylum, you'll find multiple classes. For example, we belong to the class Animalia. Or sorry, the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata. Our class is Mammalia. All right. Within classes, you'll have multiple orders, then families, then genus, and a lot of times they kind of stop at species. That's the most specific. Notice that root word there? And that's the most specific group, although some people will go into subspecies and even um, other things like breeds. For example, all dogs belong to the same species, but a dachshund, for example, is very different from a Great Dane or uh, an Irish setter. Now, remembering this sequence is one of the challenges that students often face. And when I was studying this in uh, high school and college, I too had to struggle to try to memorize the sequence. Then I had a grad student in my zoology course who came up with a simple mnemonic, a uh, memory device for remembering this. Now, unfortunately, she gave me an R-rated version of this and I'm gonna clean this up. The sequence that you can use to remember this is King, Philip, Can, Order, For, Good, Spaghetti. <laughs> 